Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So today's video is sponsored by Intel. Intel was kind enough to send over some of their Alder Lake CPUs for testing as I've been pretty happy with the performance I've been seeing from other people's reviews. They were interested to get my opinion and my feedback on these CPUs and share it with you guys. So for me, the big question is, who are these CPUs for? And that's what I wanna answer in this video. Now that I've had hands-on time with Alder Lake, I wanna give you guys my feedback on them and if they make sense for your situation. So kicking things off, Intel was kind enough to send over their new flagship, the Intel Core i9-12900K. This is an eight performance core plus eight efficient core CPU coming in with a total of 24 threads. And this can be had regularly for about $599. They also sent over the Intel Core i5-12600K. This comes with six performance cores, as well as four efficient cores for a total of 10 cores. And this CPU right now can be found regularly for about $299. Intel also sent over the MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 board. So this way I can use my existing RAM. I didn't have to go try to hunt down some DDR5. Although I will talk about memory as with this platform, it actually makes a bigger deal than I thought it would. Speaking of memory, I'm using the Kingston Fury Beast DDR4 3200 CL16 32 gig kit. And I paired this with the Kingston Renegade PCIe Gen 4.0 NVMe. This is a PS5 capable NVMe. So this is basically the fastest on the market since I'm testing out the fastest CPUs on the market. And to remove as much CPU limitation as possible, I borrowed my friend Austin, thank you Austin, his GeForce RTX 3090. So we're going ahead and testing basically the best of the best here today. Now, if you're interested in the rest of the specs, they are linked down below. And if you wanna check any of these out, there will be links so you can go ahead and take a look at those. So now let's go ahead and take a look at those benchmarks I was talking about. So the first benchmark that I want to highlight is Watch Dogs Legion. The reason why I want to check this out is because this is actually a very CPU demanding sequence considering this is a canned benchmark. For some reason, it just is. It's just very CPU demanding. So I wanted to see where this landed. We have the Core i9-12900K coming in at 125 FPS on average with a 1% low of 94 FPS, which is by far and away the highest I have personally ever seen. And in comparison, we have the Intel Core i5-12600K coming in with an average FPS of 115 and a 1% low of 90, so not too far behind. So now this next benchmark, this is the big one. I've been using this for years. Shadow of the Tomb Raider came out in 2018, and I've been using it ever since. And the performance that I'm seeing here is absolutely staggering. So on the Intel Core i9-12900K, we get an average FPS of 184 with a 1% 1 low of 130 FPS. The Core i5-12600K is no slouch, coming in at 172 FPS on average and 116 on the 1% low. Alrighty guys, so I really want to harp on the Shadow of the Tomb Raider number. Like I said, I've been benchmarking this for years. And in reality, I've benchmarked it a lot here recently when going through a lot of the older CPUs like the i5 uh, or the i7-3770K, the Ryzen 5 1600, just videos I did here recently. I've been testing this out and I've not, never, never before seen performance anywhere near this particular level. Now granted, those systems weren't as powerful, I wasn't using an RTX 3090, but I was using very powerful graphics cards like the RX 6700 XT, and even still, nowhere near these numbers. In fact, the Core i9-12900K hitting 130, so over 120 FPS on the 1% low, means that you can basically run Shadow the Tomb Raider locked at high refresh rates on this CPU. That is absolutely insane. The Core i5 was only a hair behind that. So it's almost a locked 120 FPS on the $300 Intel CPU. But what was more surprising was the difference. Now, the numbers don't really show this, and that's this is going to get a little bit more subjective. I'm going to give you guys my opinion here, but the numbers don't show that the 12900K is much faster, but just playing the game at those speeds, it felt even smoother. So there was actually even more there than I can really demonstrate to you guys. There is a lot of extra horsepower in that 12900K that is not being that is untapped, to be perfectly frank with you. And the reason for that is, is the DDR4-3200-CL16 uh, memory that I used 
is the limitation. So after playing with these CPUs, especially the 12900K, it makes sense why Intel now supports DDR5. Because DDR4, at least the most common version of it, isn't going to give you the best possible performance out of that CPU. This is absolutely crazy that we need faster RAM to keep up. So it was really funny just being like, well, the GPU's not pegged, the CPU's still got more in the tank. I can't make this go any faster because right now I don't have any faster RAM. Personally, I'm looking at getting my hands on some DDR5 and we can take further looks at this down the road, but it's just absolutely nuts to see that game running that fast because uh, I, I just remember platforms using like RX 570s and whatnot, not even being able to hit 40 FPS on average and now seeing the game running at 130 FPS on the 1% low is crazy. So, alrighty guys, I'm super impressed. In terms of gaming, this is a level of performance I've personally never seen before in the most demanding benchmark, in my opinion, for CPUs. So I'm excited to see if I can push it even further using better and faster memory. Like I said, I'm trying to work on that so we can do more investigations in the future. So now it's time for the big question. Who are these CPUs for? So let's start with the tougher one. That's the Intel Core i9-12900K. The reason why this is a little bit tougher is because this is a top tier performing CPU. Right now, it is the fastest gaming CPU you can possibly buy. Now, my perspective has kind of changed a little bit on this market after doing the podcast with Ivan over at Frame Chasers because that's basically what he does. He's very enthusiastic about pushing the absolute maximum. Price to performance isn't really a concern for him. He will spend four times the money for 5% faster because that's what he enjoys. He enjoys hitting those absolute top speeds. And there's a big enough market out there for that. And that's who this CPU is designed for. If you happen to fall into that market where you're like, I want the best, uncompromised, I don't want to be like, oh, it's this might be better at this or this might be better at that. Nope, if you're the guy that's like, I want the fastest gaming CPU, point blank and the period, that's the CPU to get for you. So if you're running like a 360 hertz display and you wanna push maximum FPS, that's who this is for. And then in steps, the Intel Core i5-12600K. This is the everyman CPU. Right now, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, and I've said this before, even before Intel sent them to me and paying for this video, the Intel Core i5-12600K at the 300-ish dollar price point where it is, is the best CPU you can get at that price point. It just is. This is just confirmed that considering it's just a little bit slower than the i9-12900K, I would say that's probably the better way to go for the average person. But if you're somebody running like an RTX 3090 or an RX 6700 XT and you want the absolute maximum frame rate, no compromised, that's who the 12900K is for. So it makes sense why Intel sent me these two CPUs because you have the absolute best, which I know some of you guys are gonna be like, yeah, that's me, I want the best. And then the absolute best value, which is the 12600K, that's probably gonna be the majority of you guys. And in all honesty, if you are out there and you're building a new PC from ground up, you're building a whole new system, the 12600K is my personal recommendation. You get about 90%-ish of the gaming performance for half the price point. But like I said, if you want uncompromised gaming, get the i9-12900K. So this is pretty clear cut. This wasn't that difficult um, to, to sort out here. Intel priced these appropriately to where they make sense next to their competition and they're affordable for you guys. It's not like I'm talking about like a $3,000 CPU versus like a $500 CPU. Then it'd be very difficult for me to recommend the $3,000 CPU. Right here, it does cost more for the i9-12900K, but it is also better at other things like productivity, multitasking, and things of that nature due to the higher core counts. But looking at things from a purely gaming perspective, you have the best at about $600, and then you have the best value at about $300. So you can't really go wrong if you wanna pick up either of these CPUs. Just make sure that you pick up the one that's right for you. So those are just my thoughts from my hands on time with Intel's new Alder Lake CPUs. If you've tested, tested these out before, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think that these recommendations make sense? If you want the best, get the best. If you want the best value, get the best value. Uh, I know a lot of you guys out there have your own opinions, interested to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you like videos like this, please smash that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. We'll be doing more videos using these CPUs moving forward. Like I said, I'm gonna try to get the faster RAM to literally see how far I can push 
push the i9 12900K. See how many more frames are being left behind because of just RAM. I do think that there's more in that tank. So I'm interested to test that out. Other things I'm interested in testing out are like emulation and other things that are really single thread heavy. We'll be taking a look at those in the future as well. So make sure you subscribe, hit that little notification bell. And yeah, that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.